Yo. Hey, man. How you doing? Pretty good. <laughs> good to see you, bud. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah, all right, mate. Long time no speak. Yeah, yeah. Mike, uh, excited to have a little catch up. Can't believe it's almost been a year. When I started the trip, I thought it was just going to be a grueling solo experience. And, uh, you know, the goal was simple cycle from Toronto to Vancouver. But I wish I knew what it was going to turn into. And I probably would have put a bit more effort into capturing some decent footage as we slowly lost our minds. Life was pretty stable in London at that point, but I think it was just a timing thing. A combination of having a really bad day in the office, mixed with sort of going through a pretty rough breakup recently. And then I met my friend from school after work, and he just announced that he was moving out to Toronto, and he asked if I wanted to go out there for a bit with him. Uh, and then, you know, the next day I handed in my notice at work and then within a month the bike was packed in a cardboard box and I was flying out to Toronto with a most skeleton plan of uh, how I was going to get across the country. Day one of a bike at the most westerly point of uh, Lake Ontario. Big Sue's is uh, performing well. She's loaded up fully for the first time and seems to be coping in my way. Definitely feels a lot more wild as you can see. A wasp just landed on my leg not long ago and I nearly cycled straight into a river, uh, which would have not been a great start. Oh, bollocks. I've been going for the uh, two stop strategy on the sun cream, which seems to have worked well yesterday so far. Only back to 30 as well. Risque for a ginger. 35k in total, which I said I wouldn't do, considering how much my back is in bits from yesterday. Oh, I think some bogeys just tripped down there. Apologies. Absolute slog. This head, headwind is insane. My God. This wind is really taking it out of me. I just, it's driving me insane. One of the meals has not done me good. Had an emergency roadside code brown. I won't go into any more detail. I'm just going mental now. I just told a pack of jelly beans to fuck off. Oh, I just need to get to this place. Yeah, it was still pretty early days of the trip. I was starting to feel pretty anxious as I was getting into the northern areas of Ontario where it's so remote. Uh, you know, areas where I've basically been told you need to start thinking about bears. Made a bit of a last minute decision and took a detour to see um, an old friend Katie who I hadn't seen for at least six years. And little did I know making that decision to go see her would just have such a massive impact on uh, the rest of the trip. Day 10. Made it to Sault Ste. Marie, which is a definite milestone. I don't know, I don't believe I've even mentioned this yet, but uh, a friend of a friend uh, is actually going to come and meet me. Uh, he's coming up tonight, so um, he's going to join me for the rest of the trip. So I'm not going to be just going solo, which would be nice to actually share some uh, share some of a ride with and not go completely insane on my own. But it's quite fun. I guess it started when I was a, a kid. I just I uh, I biked to my cottage one time. 
and I said to myself, why, like, I should just do Canada one day. Alright, first morning of the trip. Um, I'm in Sault Ste. Marie, and I'm feeling pretty fucking stoked. From March 2019, I, my marriage was in shambles. Like, it was an utter disaster. And I was, like, still hoping that I would be able to, like, repair the marriage and, like, get it back on track. But by June, it just was very evident that it just wasn't going to work. So I, I had moved out and just kind of resetting myself. And all of a sudden, I get a call from my buddy Jake saying, Hey, there's this really, really tall British guy staying at my girlfriend's and he's biking across Canada. He's like, aren't you, like, aren't you doing that still? And, uh, I was just, my mind was blown. I was like, what? I, like, I couldn't fathom that this connection was made. It was just so crazy. <laughs> Day 11 on the bike. Or what feels like potentially the start of day one again, as I now have Davy Boy joining me. How's it going? Got my resident Canadian to look after me from here to Vancouver. You see them in Paris, don't you? <laughs> You've got them squawking. I know. <laughs> there were some pretty rough days. At like the first two weeks for me was quite painful. I had a, a serious tendon thing going on in my left leg and my kneecap was just constantly on fire, <laughs> so inflamed. Uh, but eventually with just, I just pushed through it and it healed up and it started to get stronger and I didn't feel any pain really. Day 17? properly thinned out now and uh, as we're getting into the prairies it's just so flat <laughs> there's nothing around but feeling so much more up for it now uh, got Davy Boy on the, on board I mean it's it's mad that he's just dropped everything to come out on this trip and like he's going through Sounds like he's going through some rough shit with his marriage. And uh, I hope he's getting what he needs from a trip too. Oh, cramp, cramp. I'm not much better than him, but uh, at least I'm sitting down. <laughs> Hunkering. This guy is so sketchy looking right now. Look at him, he's just standing there. Mr. Hunker Man. Are you Hunker Dory? I am Hunkering. Alright. Day 19 or whatever the fuck. Doesn't matter. Who lost the count? Made it into Manitoba. What? what? what, what? There's a sign, lame ass little sign, I'd say. Anyways, made it. The fact that we could kind of ride together and have like a camaraderie and and build a friendship that like that was uh, that I figured that was going to be a really fun part of the trip and I think for me that was um, very important like with I think a solo ride would not have been nearly as fun but you can share that kind of that hardship with a partner with a buddy and it it somehow like transforms it into a positive thing the simplicity of just riding your bike day after day uh, it just surprised me how valuable that was from a mental perspective 
and I just don't think we get many opportunities in life to sort of take your way, take, take yourself away from all these distractions and just focus on one thing all day and you know you could really engage with the people you were meeting and the places you were going because you didn't have anything else to focus on it was just you the road and the bike and what you're cycling into Today we rode from uh, sunrise to sunset and we're about to hit 170k and I'm fucking feeling it. Fucking feeling it hard. Nothing around here. It's like the 10th or 11th day in a row with no rest. I don't know why we keep doing this to ourselves. Absolutely spent them now. Got um, got a half day tomorrow, then we're having a rest day in Drumheller, so I think we've just been pushing to get to that. And, uh, we probably should have chilled. Had another flat tire yesterday, six, six for me, only one for Dave. I just, I'm too heavy, I'm too big. Well, I'm losing weight rapidly. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Are you serious? I keep weighing myself. It really did feel like the prairies were never going to end. And then uh, as we got close to Drumheller, it, just, it was just a game changer. And, you know, it sort of signified at the start of the Rocky Mountains. And that's what we were looking forward to the most. Day 32. Me and Dave are up early doors for the old Riverhurst Ferry. Crossing Lake Diffenbaker. I think the Drumheller Airbnb was was wicked. That, that was one of my favorite places that we stopped. We just needed a night off where we didn't have to speak to anybody. And we could just gorge gorge on food in our underwear and just be absolute ingrates. Europe, you'll get down. You're never running from this town. And I think you said you'll never get anything better than this. Cause you're going round in a circle. And everyone knows your trouble. Day 33, 43, and 
we are on the Alberta British Columbia border. You can see lovely sunny Alberta behind us and this is what we're about to go into. Gross. We've got to get over these bloody massive hills through the pass and it's hailing, snowing sideways right into our faces. Ah! King can, not a good idea. I've been running around 300 kilometers with this thing. Stupid. I think we were running in a really finite period of time where the season seemed to be sort of changing rapidly, sweeping towards the west. And we were just in front of it for the whole trip until it caught up with us in the Rockies. You know, we were in Winnipeg in mid-September and we were out in t-shirts. A week after we left, they had ice storms that brought power cuts across the city and there was snow on the ground until the next spring. Right, it's getting pretty hairy now. Pretty steep drop off on the right hand side. Bumpy old surface. Tunnels ahoy. Few trestle bridges. There he is. She said they know how you heard about the family that burned down in that house. <laughs> well, that was good. Made it to the big buffer. Are you ready for this, bud? I'm all lit up. I'm, uh, I'm lit and I'm laughing. Fully lit. Into the darkness. We're in. We're underground. It's well dark. I mean, the ground's slightly uneven to say the least. Oh god, it's bumpus. Ah! can't prepare or nobody can really explain to you the the gravity of how like relentless mother nature is especially in the mountains you can buy you can buy the most expensive Gore-Tex helmet caps and like it doesn't matter the the mountains will destroy you oh baby she wanted to die by a river alex Dude, so this is not fun. She could watch the tree line. Properly you messed this one up. We're told that this pass was uh, free of snow, but as you can see, it ain't. And we've come so far and it's taken so long, but we're gonna call it a day, we're going to turn around and go back to the bottom. We probably won't even get there before dark, but it's the safest option at the moment. That rail trail from Castlegar was a prime example of just, humans are just frail. We're, we're frail, weak little animals that stand no chance against the, the mother nature in the mountains. Just got down the hill. Feet are absolute ice blocks. We're heading straight to the nearest fast food joint to warm up. <sighs> Diet is really important on a trip like that. Like, I totally was malnourished that whole trip. But we just were not capable of finding, like, good protein. Um, on a reliable basis, so it was tough. McDonald's, In this first episode of uh, Weight Gainers, Weight Gainers, Weight Gainers, Weight Gainers, you join us here at the delicious uh, McDonald's, McDonald's restaurant, uh, where we're sampling some of the finer delights. Let's have a look what's on the table. We have the Doobla Doobla Big Mac. Right now we've got 
Big Mac Classic. Boom, about 500 calories there. Oh, oh. We are going all in. We've gone all in with the old mighty Angus. Large fries, 510 calories. Bruh. A little guilty pleasure of mine, the McFish burger. Davy boy himself. He's gone for 20 chicken nuggets. You know you're hitting the high calorie counts with that. Sprite with orange or something. And a large soft drink. It's like enormous cup as big as my head. Obviously we won't be getting Diet Coke. 20 pieces of nuggets. It's at least another 700 calories. And a McDouble. A McDouble. Triple McDouble combo. A cheeky little McDouble on the side. For a total of 2,500 calories. You can see here, high concentration of essential trans fats. It will stick on the body, approximately here, here, here under the arms. Here on the bingo wings and here in the stomach area. They're the main three areas you want to hit with any weight gain session. All in all, this lovely combination of food is really going to stave off any of that weight loss which we, has been occurring over the last two months. pretty clear that neither of us were ready to end that trip in Vancouver and you know we, we discussed like Portland or Seattle heading down the Pacific coast but there was no plan in place at all I feel like it was just you know keep going till the legs give in or we completely bankrupt ourselves we just uh, woke up this morning it's all frosty the grounds covered the roofs are covered. That's where we stayed there last night. And uh, look at the mountains up there. It's gonna be a good day. We're trying to get to Vancouver. I guess from my perspective, it was always very much a physical challenge that I could label with numbers. You know, how, how far would we go? What time could we do it in? And it surprised me how different it was from that and, and what I got back from it from a mental standpoint. And I think it brings us back to the simplicity of the fact that we are humans, like we're animals. We we need oxygen and water and food and and some shelter that's it's really quite simple but our technology and uh, just the way we live in our modern world it it gets very complicated very easily especially being able to complete it with someone else you know, from a completely different corner of the world and being able to just talk through things with someone who has no sort of prior knowledge of your life and it really put everything in perspective some stories you tell you'd be going through it and it would just reaffirm very much the way you, you felt about a certain person or a scenario and other times you'd be going through other stories and you realize that you didn't actually feel the same about it anymore or you didn't feel sort of particularly proud of the way you acted or, or the way you treated someone else. I didn't have kind of like realms of influence that overlapped and that allowed us to basically talk completely freely and openly about what was actually um, a problem to each other and because of that I just think that the ther it was very therapeutic. Made 
did it. Yes. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do recall having some separation anxiety from you, and <laughs> it was very strange to to like getting on that flight and like knowing that you were still biking was one of the weirdest things. It was so unnatural to not be two hundred meters behind you <laughs> on the road. Yeah, it was really odd setting off on my own and it was never a plan it was just because my friend had texted me and said he was going to be in san francisco in 10 days time so it just seemed like the perfect way to finish oi, oi. we're back baby we're back online bolt on for the journey vancouver's done had a bit of a slog down to Oregon, but the weather's finally turned and we're up in the hills of uh, the Oregon coastline. Oh shit. Gotta watch yourself in them hills. Heading there to the Pacific Coast Highway, the 101. Gonna get there today, it's supposed to be beautiful. And ride that for eight days down to San Fran. It's gonna be, uh, some of the best roads of a trip I've heard. The initial excitement quickly petered out as I, you know, the long days mixed with the new sort of loneliness and dodging of the fires they were having in California. Day 76. This last couple days is just tough. Haven't heard from Dave at all. I have no idea what he's done. I know he had some shit to sort out when he gets back. I don't know what he's gonna do. And I don't think he knows either. You have tons of time to think about um, situations that you're in that maybe you don't like, maybe you, you want to make some changes in your life. It turns out for me that although I, I kind of made peace with a lot of um, th 
things about like my previous relationship. It didn't really help me until I got back. I, I what I really needed to do was finalize. I had come to some conclusions, but I actually needed to go back and instill these changes that I uh, needed to uh, to do to make my my life happier. What the bike trip did is it allowed it allowed for that to take place. It kind of reinstilled my my integrity in myself and it kind of recharged my soul. And it was I was able to confront that when I got back. Sunrise on the last morning. Just after 7 a.m. All packed up, ready to go. About 100 miles to go to San Francisco. Focus. Yeah, we talked a lot about having these epiphany moments. Like we joked about it throughout the trip. And you know, one day you'd just be cycling through the wilderness and everything would become clear and you would have found the answers to life. You know, obviously it doesn't work like that, but it wasn't until, you know, we got back to reality that you realized that actually to an extent that has happened and uh, certain things you, situations that you're going through or people that you've been seeing after a trip, you, you know, things were clearer and, than they were before. And I think, you know, it wouldn't have been that way without having all the time on the bike to think.